Hey everyone, it's Maggie Bot with day two of my vlog every day in November. And I apologize if I'm shivering, it's four degrees in here and I'm cold. But um, today is Sunday. Yesterday was the last day we were attending Sasquatch Game Festival. So we went in thinking, as I said in my last vlog, let's play something chunky and heavy and get it on a table and just play something four hours long. And we ended up playing three very light games. So yeah, well, we had a really fun time. We ran into really cool people. So it worked out well, but I did not play Zanguo or Aquasphere or the Golden Ages or really Orleans. I, I missed out on a lot of things, but there was zero things there that I wanted to play that I will not have the opportunity to play very soon as items start arriving from Europe. So Zanguo is something on my list, but I will also own it in like a month. So it's not dire to me. Uh, we played Progress Evolution of Technology, which is a Kickstarter game from Niskin Games, um, being brought uh, over into the States by Passport Game Studios. We played, um, oh, we played uh, what they're calling an English Mysterium. We played this guy, um, which is my copy. And I got to play it twice, which is nice, because I hadn't actually played it yet, and I've had it since Gen Con. So it's it was time. It was time. And we played Waggle Dance, which is... Grublin Games, which is a UK, somewhere in, not UK, mm, Grublin Games. Sorry, you're in Europe somewhere, but I don't remember where. Um, but that was a, it was a worker placement game with little bees. And um, so progress went really well. Uh, I would not play it again with more than three players. It is probably a two to three player game pretty easily. Um, but with four players, it tends to drag a little bit, uh, and it's just a pretty, clearly a, just a tech tree. You buy a card because it makes another card cheaper, and you kind of go up the chain, and you want to do as best you can in the three categories possible. Um, really cool game, though, and I'm sad that I missed the Kickstarter. I missed it by, like, a day or so after my demo of it the first time. Um, and then the Passport game guys, like, walked by, and so I got to bug them to find out when the copies were getting to the States, and they said, any time now, so they should be in processing the next week or so, uh, which is great. Good news for me, because then I can have it, and own it, and have to sleeve it all. But that was just the base game, and inside the box there's also, like, another age that we didn't play, and there are kind of leaders that give you a little, like, a direction at the beginning of the game. Um, and when we played Mysterium, I, so, let me just, like, get my complaint hat out. Yeah. Uh, we played Mysterium because I've been looking for party games that I might like. Somebody suggested it to me. and I've never been a big fan of Dixit, but I really liked Concept. So, the difference between Dixit and Concept, I think, for me, was that Concept was so high speed and intense that it made up for the fact that the, it's not a strategy game. And with Dixit, the pacing is just so slow that I get really, really bored. Um, Mysterium has, I think, enough of that kind of concept interpretation of thought where it will keep me interested the whole time. But when we played it, it became almost like a literal puzzle for the people we played against. So in the game, one player is trying to get the other players to guess a set of cards correctly by the end of the game. Every player investigating is given a set of cards. So let's say there are four players. You're going to give three players a set of three cards that they don't know about, the ghost knows. And at the end of the game, one of the sets is the correct one. And all of the guessing is done with those big Dixit-sized cards with the art, and it's now on my floor. Um, so there's giant art with lots of stuff. Um, somebody at our table actually knew the game well enough to know that they had actually increased the difficulty, um, or the, they decreased the amount of details, because before it was a little too confusing, so the, the cards had to be dulled down just a smidge. But what I like is that my version in my head was that you're going to look at a card and have to kind of get there in an interpretation sense. 
when I played it, the group was very much like there's a dog there, there's a dog here, there's a circle there, there's a circle here. So it was a it was kind of a very literal matching to the two cards rather than um, I'm having trouble with the idea, but I. I, I want the cards to have to evoke something that reminds me of the clue. I That is the way I want to play it, I think. And I think my group that I no normally would play concept with will will latch onto that. Because I think when you're just matching colors and shapes, it's just a worser game. Uh, and then Boggle Dance went fine. It's a... It's a a uh, worker placement game with dice, and you are trying to build your hive and flip over a number of your hive pieces to honey, which takes some nectar. It is meant to be kind of a lighter game. I think when I talked to the guys in Essen, they were asking game right games and AEG and talking with those guys. So I think game right would be silly not to go for it. It would be kind of in that same Forbidden Island space that they have, where it's kind of an introduction to a larger set of games. Um, uh, fantastic, but for kind of a bit more experienced gamers like we were, um, but we didn't have to play the last round because it was very easy to just look around the table and see who could win that round. So that, I mean, that's not a problem for a 10-year-old. It is a problem for a group of us that probably play too many games. Um, uh, and then lastly, this morning, I played some Oddball Aeronauts, and I don't know if you guys care or know, or if you have a deck, but if you're ever wanting something kind of cool and different, uh, every Sunday, Nigel, Nigel Pine and his brother Lloyd sometimes, um, they, they get together and they do these Google Hangouts where anyone can come in, you can play or you can not play, you can chat, you can heckle, um, and you play Oddball Aeronauts with the people that made the game, and it's how I learned the game. I actually learned through webcams with the creator, and um, it's just a really cool thing that he's doing that I don't see other game designers doing necessarily. Um, their Kickstarter comes out for the next set of decks, it comes out in the next few days, um, and today I got to try something cool and new, so with the incoming next two decks, you're also getting an introduction into the multiplayer game. So no longer just two players, but now up to four players. And we played one variant of it today, which works over webcam like the original game. Um, so that is the kind of every man for himself. And then there's a partner, like team, team member version, but that one doesn't really work over webcams. It's going to be an in-person one. Um, so that was really neat. And um, I crushed the whole table, and that felt really good. So that's a plus. Um, <laughs> I would just say that uh, I think what I'm going to do is send Nigel a suggestion um, when his Kickstarter goes up that because he's adding a multiplayer game, he could also make like a pack of cards to put in the boxes that are like the multiplayer pack. Um, that way you could change the tricks and the wording to target the active player, target the whatever, and just have those as kind of new design space that he could play in. Um, they did something like this, uh, Magic the Gathering has been doing this more and more lately, where a lot of cards in Magic say target player, and now when there are fun effects that they think would be good for multiplayer, they'll they'll print the words each player or each opponent and that way when you're playing against one person it only affects that one but when you're playing against multiplayer it affects the whole table. Um, I think that would make a really excellent addition to Oddball Aeronauts to have um, the multiplayer also have some special cards but I don't know if they'll have the time or effort that that kind of testing and balancing takes so maybe that'd be something that they could do in the future or that I can I can do on my own because I can do things um but that's all and I probably rambled too much already so I will see you guys later bye